two minutes ago there were fish jumping here like crazy. Camera wasn't ready, but it was such a delight. Hello everybody. Great to have you all back from so far apart. It's amazing. From Europe to the prairies, from Palestine to South Africa to Norway, Australia. Marvelous. So you can see today the the sun is a questionable appearance with the intense cloud. Maybe we'll have a surprise all the way around. In fact, the prognosis was for 60% rain at six o'clock. Now it's almost seven and not a drop has fallen. There were some gusts of wind. So obviously the weather has changed. We felt also yesterday was cooler. We were grateful for that. You believe that I'm work walking here in the Holy Land, right? <laughs> I could be at a lake in Ireland. But then if you're a botanist, maybe these plants don't grow there. So you could say, no, you're not. You have evidence that you're at the Sea of Galilee. Or you were here before and you recognize the place. So you say, no, I was there. That's not Ireland. That's uh, the Sea of Galilee. And you say, well, I saw this so many times already. I saw this clip of mountain here and I know that's Mount Arbel, the southern cliff, so don't try and pull a fast one that you're in Ireland. Our chef Motti was showing me some little shots and videos he took of Georgia, not Georgia, United States the country Georgia and he was there for a course a culinary course for a few days uh, learning about the Georgian kitchen it's wonderful to have staff that are interested and in always pushing the boundaries and doing things like this to prepare better for our our people we actually had a big pilgrimage group visit yesterday evening as well from Spain with about I think 59 people. So they registered as two separate buses, two separate groups because the maximum is 30. So they were practical purposes operating with two buses, 30 people in each bus, basically a guide and driver and so on. And following all the prescriptions, all the requirements, And they came to do an hour of prayer. It's also part of the walk of faith to take time to pray. Sometimes it's a long walk and we get tired along the way. And stopping to pray, to take time to open our hearts to, to the Lord. And we see Saul when he was Converted, he spent a couple of years in the desert, basically praying. You know, there are times that require that major commitment to silence and prayer, to listening, because our world gets turned upside down. To sort it out deeply. Many of our volunteers, I think, come here partly for that reason, to disconnect from their normal life routine and to really go deeper in an encounter with God and so reorganize their lives, restructure their lives. 
and it's beautiful to see that process happening. So today we have very powerful readings from Romans. A practical tip, uh, you'll notice like always uh, in the liturgy, uh, major snippets are taken out, generous portions. Even in themselves, they probably have too much. I'm getting a couple little drops of rain right now. So six, the sixth hour came and it's not over and the rain is coming. I'm not sure how much and how fast. But quite, uh, drops are falling in my hands now. Let's see. If it gets very heavy, I'd probably have to protect the phone. I don't want that to get exposed to, to water. So people, uh, these readings are very powerful. And the practical tip is that the selection of readings per force omits portions and today there's a nice portion of very interesting connection between Paul and the Roman community and his conversation with them uh, getting clear with each other it's uh, it's interesting but the text moves on then to really begin the major theme of the letter the theme of faith and the gift of salvation through faith. Because God gives us justice, salvation, not by judging us, but by giving himself to us. And when people give themselves to each other, there's a lot of faith involved, there's a lot of trust. And we will be saved, we are saved, in the measure that we believe. Blessed is she who believed. Blessed he who believed. Blessed they who believed. And then Paul has some very strong words about not accepting the reality of God and the gift of God and how people's minds are darkened and that raises the whole issue of atheism about 20-25 minutes ago I saw these guys out there you see the boat they're fishermen and they were hauling in their nets and that actually reminds me to say another little technical thing I, I put that picture up for those who are on the WhatsApp chat, just telling them about the delay in this morning because of all the cloud. But um, I myself am getting messages from people on WhatsApp that are uh, abusive in the sense that they're, they're coming after me for other things. So I just encourage you to uh, keep your eyes open and and usually there are little clues in the way they write in their sometimes their lack of grammar or English or sometimes the way they phrase things and you can say wow this is not normal correspondence this is some people that are doing something like almost weird you know something different something out of the ordinary so it gets you on the alert because there are people out there prowling and abusing like in everything in life you know people who steal credit cards, people who, who steal the mail, people who just abuse, people who rob people on buses, very slick, very slick, they steal, nobody notices and afterwards they're missing something. So every time we're in contact with human beings, we can also encounter that type of, of abuse, that type of um, sad reality of people taking from others what's not theirs. So just be maturely sensitive and wise and check things out well before you get involved with things. It's kind of the opposite message <laughs> regarding faith. Well, we have plenty to check out with God because Paul is saying there's plenty in nature to know that God exists. Like all these plants, all their organization, everything about them is so marvelous. 
the God's wonders are revealed, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. That's our psalm. You know, there's uh, extraordinary revelation in nature. I often tell people that the sunrise, straw and chat, we're reading from the two books God wrote. And they're looking at me, you know, and I say, well, what are the two books? And some will say the Old Testament and the New Testament. I say, no, that's one. So what are the two books? Well, the first one is creation, nature. God speaks to us volumes through nature. Even a cloudy morning, the sun is out there, but we can't see it. It's hidden behind all these clouds. And we accept that it's there. We believe it's there. We have experience. And that's obviously a different area, uh, level for faith in the existence of God. But no less real. In the country, more real foundationally real and, and with besides Paul's very negative criticism of those who don't believe I think we have to be careful today repeating those kind of words because a lot of their disbelief many times not always because there's also corruption among those who don't believe in God for sure like there is among believers but I think a lot of the resistance to God and to church stems from believers poor actions and scandals and incoherent lives so there we have a lot to ask ourselves about a lot and so maybe a lot of the rejection of God and of, of church is our fault, our believer's fault. And Jesus is pretty clear about this in the gospel in the sense he's criticizing the uh, religious leaders for incoherence and for having very imbalanced criteria in their lives. They might sound religious, but they're missing the major central points of reality. And so he's criticizing the observance of external rules and external cleanliness while the heart is filthy or selfish or corrupting and rotten because of selfishness. So then he says, give alms and everything will be made whole. Everything will be resolved. And you see, that's the exact same principle of our faith because who do we believe in? In whom do we believe? We believe in a God who gives us, who self-gives. His revelation is self-giving, 100%. And so if we want to be his children and we believe in him, then we're going to be self-giving. And if we're not, then it means our faith isn't touching our lives and it's simply um, a mental hobby and not a life-transforming reality. And making us truly like God in his image and likeness, in his image and likeness of self-giving. And that plays out very concretely in each of our homes, in each of our kitchens, in each of our recreational moments, in compassion, in mutual understanding, in resolving of differences and conflicts. So at first sight, the readings mightn't look very connected, but they're actually very deeply connected in the meaning. Hey guys, I'm, I'm thinking that we're not going to be seeing too much sunshine this morning. But that's okay, we get a great feast of sunshine. I know in Colorado, they talk about having, I don't know, what is it, 300 or 320 days of clear sky with sunshine. 
and I'd say we rivaled them here. So we're not going to complain about that. We we're going to be happy and thankful. Look where they, these people put their, their, they brought out the tables so far out. They were sitting down on these tables and up to their belly button in water. This past weekend. It's a bit cleaner today. I think they did a good job cleaning up here. So people, we've lots to chew on there. The tree that died this year. Oops, all these birds. They were sitting there, I didn't notice. So we'll say goodbye. Thank you very much. God bless you. Let us be almsgivers and fill the world with the charity and the self-giving of God, of which is already replete, but we can always reflect it. See you later, alligators.